Well, welcome back. You're watching the Business News on GMT with me, Aaron Heselhurst. Look, it is a, a massive problem affecting, uh, affecting companies, central banks, governments and us, the consumer. Apparently, well, we know, nobody is safe. Facebook's founder, he's a tech guru, right? So you'd think, Mark Zuckerberg. He appears to have had his accounts on sites including Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, etc. briefly compromised on Sunday by hackers. Last week we knew uh, London Stock Exchange right here. Its website was hijacked for two hours. The list goes on and on. But take a look at these numbers because in 2015, last year, 90% of large firms had a data breach. That's, uh, in 2014 it was 81%. Oh, it's an 81% rise, I should say, so that's just how fast it's growing. They also say that the average cost of that breach was $2.1 million. That's an increase from just 870000 in 2014. Look, let's break all this down. Our next guest, he's regarded. I've been selling him. He better deliver. As one of the world's foremost experts on the topic, he's lectured on cybercrime around the world at some of the most prestigious universities. Mikko Hippinen, he's Chief Research Officer at F-Secure and joins us. Mikko, great to have you in the studio. Thank you very much. Can we start with, mm. you think, you know, Mark Zuckerberg, a tech guru, right? He's, you know, he knows what he's doing. If he can have his social media sites breached, what the, we've we got no hope in hell, have we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Um, I think he fell for the, the, one of the most common problems people, most common mistakes people mm. do with their accounts, which is sharing the same password on different sites, because we can't remember the passwords, and we're too lazy to start using password programs. So there was this LinkedIn breach um, four years ago, which yep. became public last week. Yep. We're guessing he had the same password on LinkedIn as he had on Instagram, Twitter and elsewhere, and, and that's what happened. Right. So the key, again, and we, it is a message we hear often, but have a pretty decent, lengthy, with lots of different characters, password, and don't use the same one, right? Simple or not? Well, actually, the instructions are very like, conflicting. Like, you know, pick a unique password for every site, make them very long, never write them down. You can't do that. You can no. do that with three sites. You cannot do it with 50 sites that we all require today. So my advice is to what I do, use a password manager. Use a program to remember the passwords for you. Then you only have to remember one password, and that's the password for your password program. Okay, but I don't want to delve, I want to keep going. There's so much to talk about. But can't the program manager then be, be hacked into, and then they've got it? Depends on how it's implemented. It can be implemented so that the passwords are stored on your devices, encrypted, and they're just synced through the manager or the, the, the company providing the service, okay. which means they cannot be stolen. So okay. it can be done right. Okay, uh, I want to talk about that, that those numbers, you know, the increase. 90 percent last year, 90 percent of big companies mm. around the world uh, had data breached, if mm. you will. So they, they were hacked. Mm. Um, does that suggest that still to this day, big companies are not spending enough on internet security, or the hackers are just getting better? It is a race. It's a cat and mouse race between the attackers and between the defenders, and we cannot build 100% secure system. No matter how hard we try, we cannot build a perfect system because these systems are being built by people and people make mistakes. These programs are being programmed by human beings and they will make mistakes, they will always make mistakes. And that means that there will always be you no know, vulnerabilities in your network if you have a large enough network. So I keep saying this, how many of the Fortune 500 are hacked right now? Answer, 500. Because if you are a Fortune 500 network, or Fortune 500 company, your network is so large, you can't possibly secure every single part of it at every single time. Wow, well that's kind of scary. So, and it's a constant, so you're defending, you're putting up the walls, it's a constant, the, the, the naughty people are trying to get in, mm. and, and it's inevitable, some get in, some get around, some go over the top, right? That's yeah. right, we, we cannot secure all the networks all the time. Um, can I ask you this about one of, I mean, uh, when we start talking about hacking and we talk, you know, we know governments are hacked mm. and, and military and all that kind of stuff, um, there's a banking system around the world. I know you raise, you've been raising this and uh, I've been reading some of your reports. It's called SWIFT, right? Mm -hmm. And this is what, if I'm transferring money abroad and, mm -hmm. and vice versa, this is the international system. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the interbank network, how they exchange money from one bank to another bank in another country. They're getting in some into that. Some mm -hmm. people are getting into that. Is mm -hmm. that right? Tell me, tell me, yeah, the story. There's been a series of breaches, not into the SWIFT network, but into the banks that use the SWIFT network. So mm -hmm. there's been one bank breached in Bangladesh and, and another one, um, or actually several of them breached right now. We believe at least four international banks have been breached and the attackers have tried wiring money close to a billion dollars from these banks. They haven't succeeded in all of that, but they have been able to steal over 90 million dollars that we know of. 
Well, $90 million is still very, you know, very, yes. very nice. Thank mm. you very much. Um, as a consumer, can I ask you this? We keep, our homes are getting smarter and smarter, right? They're all the products out there. Everything from, you know, light bulbs are connected to the internet, to toasters, mm. you name it. And, and they're selling it to us and we're all taking it on board. Mm. Am I right by saying the more stuff that we bring into our house, the internet of things or the internet of everything, mm. um, the more chances people can get into our homes and into our system, is that, mm. yeah? That is the exact problem. Like many people don't really, they don't seem to be too worried about the risk of somebody hacking their toaster or hacking their microwave oven. They go, it's, it's a toaster, like I don't care if it gets hacked. That's not the problem. Then the attackers are not interested in your toaster. They're interested in using it as a vector to get into your network, whether it's your home or your office. It's, it's a way of so it's a getting gateway, in. is it? It's a gateway of getting into where they want to be, and that's the problem. Okay, and just last but not least, all the consumers out there watching around the world, we have so many different tool, uh, internet security tools, sure. all the different brand names. W what's a good? T how do you know what to look for? Mm -hmm. Are they all the same? Because they say, oh, antivirus, anti this. No. Uh, well, yeah. Well, the first thing to look for isn't the product at all. The first thing to look for is, is back up your stuff. Make sure you have copies of what's on your computer, on your phones, on your tablets. Make sure you can recover them even if your house burns down. Like, backups are the first thing to do. Then when you've done that, then you can start looking into security software and, and patching and other ways of securing okay. your devices. Okay, and this is your world, and I've heard you speak around the world at different places, and, and you scare the bejesus out of us, typically. Sorry. Uh, in, you've got about 30 seconds. What keeps you awake at night? Anything? The, the latest threats out there? It is really the, the ICS, industrial control systems. The fact that everything around us is being run by computers and software. I mean, lights are on in this building because of computers and software. Our, mm. our society is run on computers and software. ICS, industrial control systems, which run our factories, and our, our power plants, how good we are at in actually securing that. That's what really keeps me up at night. Okay, Miko Hippenham, great to have you with us. I know you're in London for, what, it's Europe's biggest internet security, isn't it? Uh, yeah, conference. For, for, the, for the InfoSec event. Yeah, right, okay, well, enjoy that. Thanks very much, Miko. Thank we appreciate it. Miko Hippenham from F-Secure joining us there.